The church gathers together celebrating the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we move forward from the celebrations of last week, reminding ourselves again and again of how Christ calls us to be. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you all. Remembering that God calls us to be signs of the kingdom, but also recognizing that we, self, that we frequently fall short of that model. We ask for pardon and peace. And in these summer days, we pray for each other along the way. Together, together we can say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And together we give glory to God, mindful of the great gifts that God has poured out upon us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, show favor to your servants, mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, we may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God beside you who have the care of all that you need to show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, our God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat, and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I said at the beginning, these scripture readings, we have an opportunity to move forward into this way in which we start to contemplate how Jesus calls us to be. And the stage is set for us with the Book of Wisdom. And there is a challenge there because it really is a dialogue about power and authority, but about lenience and charity and the application of justice. One of the things that's really good for us to be mindful of is that interplay between power and authority and lenience and mercy. Because what do we have in the gospel passage? Jesus is using this parable to illustrate to his disciples a challenge in this parable about the slaves who want to go out and rip all the weeds out, a kind of scorched earth policy, and a recognition that the real challenge, of course, is to recognize this vision that God has for us because it's not all that different from that passage in which uh, Jesus and his disciples are moving through towns and villages and other people are, are berating Jesus and, and the disciples cry out, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven and annihilate those idiots? And Jesus has to tell them, no, that is not the vision. And our minds are cast back a little bit more sharply to really listen to those words from the Book of Wisdom. It is God's power that allows him to be lenient. It is God's power that allows him to be lenient. And the very nature of God is revealed in the mercy that he shows. It's a great challenge for us because there are petty tyrants all over the world that cry for an annihilation of enemies. All we have to do is look around the world at different dictatorships that always try to suppress and always try to stamp out that which is contrary to their particular thought process or their vision. Perhaps the most egregious in the 20th century is Hitler's final solution. Let's make sure that we get rid of all of these people that we have assigned the blame for all of the ills that we're experiencing. It doesn't work. 
And the challenge, of course, is every single time we see someone who arises with a puffed up attitude that, and continues to try to use their power and authority to wipe out or annihilate or suppress something else. How very unlike Christ they are. And how difficult and challenging it is for us when we decide that we're going to try to keep all evil away from us. We're going to make sure that our families are absolutely, completely protected and we build either physical barriers and bunkers or mental and spiritual bunkers. No, I'm not going to let any of this touch the ones that I love. But the problem is, is what does that tell us about our faith? When we listen to these words from the Book of Wisdom, and we contrast it exactly with what's going on in the Gospel passage and the challenge that the disciples are feeling here. Let's figure out a way to get rid of those weeds. And Jesus says, no, no. A scorched earth policy, you guys, is going to destroy everything. And the collateral damage, that euphemism that gets used in the modern world for death of innocence, the collateral damage is way too high. It is the power of God that allows God to act with leniency because he knows that there is nothing to fear. There is no real threat ever to God. And the one who has the power to create all things, who holds all things in mercy and in love, this same one looks kindly and mercifully upon us. So often, our actions and our reactionary behaviors and words oftentimes are an expression of our fearfulness and of our uncertainty. But the real challenge for us is to remind ourselves Christ has already triumphed. The mystery that we share in this Eucharist, the life, death, and the resurrection of the Lord, and that resurrection part means God has already triumphed. And if we're wandering around still so fearful between life and suffering, and we are so fearful of death that we have no concept or vision or even hope in resurrection, how stilted and small our lives can wind up being. As I mentioned at the beginning of the liturgy, the scriptures invite us and remind us how we are to live in the world. We have the great implementations and changes in canon law from the Code of Canon Law of 1917, when the Code was first revised in 1983, was that challenge and a reminder to all of those who had power and authority in the church that all law must be applied with pastoral charity. It must be done with the good of the individual in mind and not with an exercise of power or authority of eradicating weeds. Because the code from 1565 all the way through to the 1917 iteration was always about making sure that we could identify and sideline all those who were contrary to the life of the church or the law of the church. And some of those crazy examples, people are still very well aware of and are still feeling some of the pain. You cannot go to a celebration in another Christian denomination. And oh, there is going to be a certain amount of requirements that you're going to have if you're going to marry someone who's not Catholic. And if you are divorced, you're no longer welcome. Those were all misinterpretations of pastoral charity. And the real wisdom that is given to us again and again is God is all-powerful 
And out of the source of that power comes leniency, mercy, and charity. And anything that we do in the image and likeness of Christ, conform more and more to his image and likeness, must always be reflected in our words and actions, in kindness, in charity. For as Paul says, the Spirit strengthens us day by day, moment by moment, to live out pastoral charity, kindness, Believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of the mercy and charity that is constantly shown us, we bring our prayers and our petitions before our God. Help us to be gathered together in the unity that Christ offers to the world. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give our world leaders faith in Christ that the barriers of enmity that might exist might be broken down through compassion and mercy. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all of us recognize that true justice is always tempered by kindness. Give us the vision of your kingdom, that we might work with compassion and mercy seeking your peace for ourselves and for others. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gaps that exist in our relationships, for the alienation we sometimes feel, bring us to unity in heart, mind or spirit we pray to you O Lord Lord hear our prayer grant healing in whatever way is necessary to all those who bear the wounds of illness disease and grief in their lives we pray to you O Lord Lord hear our prayer for the particular intentions that each of us bring to mass this weekend we pray to you O Lord Lord hear our prayer Welcome into mercy. Welcome into the mercy of Christ, all those who have died. Let them rise at the word of your command and rejoice in the banquet feast of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, light for all ages, who sent your Son to be the revelation of your love and the promise for all peoples, building on the foundations of those who have gone before us, you send us to be the sign of your kingdom for future generations. Bless us with the spirit of generosity that we might accomplish your will in all things. Help us to build our future in concert with your Holy Spirit, carrying the light that you have entrusted to us as a sign to the world of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. My friends, pray that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be made acceptable to the Lord our God. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, these offerings. For in this one perfect sacrifice you have brought to completion the various offerings of your faithful people. Accept this sacrifice from your faithful servants. Make it holy as you bless the gifts of your servant Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in our world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts and you prepare us for reconciliation. Even more by your Spirit, you move human hearts so that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries may join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with all the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand that you extend to sinners. He is the way by which your peace is offered to us all. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation that Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries went about to give his life to set us free. As he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing into his hands and confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us his pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. 
May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. May he keep us always in communion with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people, just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son. So also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and with all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Remembering that the force of law is always mitigated by mercy and charity. Remembering the fullness of mercy when we're called to the fullness of the kingdom. We pray for its coming as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Wherever we happen to be, let us exchange with one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those whom you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.